welcome back everybody. So today I just wanted to take a look at, let's say completely different beers, but they are smash beers. One has a higher alpha acid hop and a higher uh, amount of grains that was used. And the other one obviously has a lower alpha acid and a lower, uh, a lower pound of grains that were used. So Matarina uh, Barveria is on my left, Idaho 7 is on my right. Um, the Barveria one is using a hop that is 8.4% AB, or geez, 8.4% alpha acid and only using two pounds of grain, where the Idaho is a 14.1% alpha acid and using two, pound, two and a half pounds of grain. Also, the ABVs. Uh, ABV on the Idaho is 6.73, and on the other one, it is 4.73. So actually, two points different. So uh, these have been sitting out because I did do a review on each. The Idaho is uh, older as in time. Um, I did them on the same day back to back, but the Idaho 7 has been out longer. So if you go ahead and look, I think you guys can see it. The Idaho on my right is uh, more cloudier. Uh, I think that's because of the protein. Um, using a higher amount of grains is leaving more uh, particles, protein in there. Uh, where only using uh, two pounds, uh, you're going to get a lighter bodied beer. Uh, especially, I did uh, mash in both of these at 150. Now, as I talked about in the Idaho 7, maybe I left the oven on 170 a little too long. So our mash temp did grow. But I don't think it's because of the hops. Uh, we're still debating if the hops add a haziness to the beer or not i'm i'm thinking it's from the malt and how much malt you use uh, because again if you look at these i'll try and clean these off this um the barbaria one is lighter in color light yellow uh, you can see through it where the one using two and a half pounds of grain is a cloudier hazier beer um, the head retention is better on the Idaho 7. You got me. I, I don't know because the Matarina Barveria has actually been bottled longer. So the carbonation level should be a little bit higher. So I don't, I, I think that tends to lean towards um, the, the malt. Something in the malt is giving us a better head on this one. Um, but for the smell, obviously they're going to be different. So I don't want to go over that. Let's uh, taste both for the body, see what we can find out in the body. So we'll start with the lighter one first. I think it, it, it's a good body. Um, it, it's not quite medium. Uh, it's probably halfway in between light and medium. You can tell um, it's not uh, uh, a thicker body. It, it's, it's watery, but it's got another level of water. Let's go ahead and taste the Idaho 7. Idaho 7 is medium, almost pushing medium. I want to say it's like creamier. Like drinking them side by side, this one feels a lot heavier uh, than the one that only uses two pounds. So I, I actually think even though my notes say and from what I know, they're both uh, mashed in at 150. I would say this mash temp went above 150, maybe 152, 154, where this one was at 150. This one tastes like the the Barveria one tastes more like the beginning um, smash beers that we made. Uh, where the temperature might have been 150, 148-ish. Uh, that lighter body that did trigger us uh, to up the malt, then to up the, the temperature of the mash in. Because upping the, the mash in temperature will give you a thicker body. 
uh, less protein will be drawn out, uh, but that should result in a lower ABV. Now, one thing that we will test here soon is comparing the same amount of grain to the same amount of grain, just different mash in temps. This one, um, the Idaho is using more grain, so that is going to bump the ABV up. But if you do a test only using two pounds, the one with the lighter mash in should be a higher ABV because the lower the mash in, the more sugar that's going to be pulled out of that and the yeast are going to eat more, which is going to increase your ABV, where the higher the, the mash in temperature, the less the yeast has to eat, which is going to lower the ABV. But yeah, I think if you did an experiment like this, you could pretty much tell which one was mashed in higher. I also think that Idaho has more of a sweet malt taste. So that could be that the yeast didn't finish the job. So the, the final gravity was a little bit higher, so that left residual sugar behind, and that's why you're getting more of a sweet malt. It also could be that the, the times that I added the hops, uh, depending on when you add the hops, is going to do something different. Um, we have one coming up that if I did it wrong, I've never used the hop, so I could have done it wrong. Um, we might get dill out of that hop uh, if it's maybe if it's used in bittering or if too much is used in dry hop we could get a dill flavor out of that I've never used it I followed um, this series that we've been doing uh, so we'll just have to see how that turns out but yeah I think if you're new to home brewing or if you're trying to learn more um, about uh, mash in temps or how much grain to use because most of the time you could say 10 to 12 pounds of this grain maybe a tiny bit of this is going to get me what i want but if you remember if you've been following my channel and you go back go back and watch my latest peach tree ipa i actually dropped the mash in temperature, I got a higher ABV beer, but the body was very, very light. It didn't balance. This tastes more like a balanced beer than what this does. Now, if I used a lower alpha acid hop in this, would this have been less balanced? I don't know. Um, that's the good part about home brewing. We can test, 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 and find out what's going on this one tastes good and all that but i would say out of these two beers this beer is a lot more balanced than this beer now if i added a uh, half a pound of uh raw two row to this and kept and kept the same hop schedule would this one have turned out better don't know until i do it um the alpha acids are lower, so if I added more grain, my guess is I would get more grain sweetness out of it. Uh, if I kept it at the same mash in temp, uh, my guess is the ABV would go up more, and that would throw the beer off more. I think to balance this one out, it has to have some more grain um, just to make that body a little thicker and to up the mash, but... Also, we might have to play around with the alpha acids or the hops uh, because on most of the time, when you see a recipe in a magazine or online, they usually give you the alpha acid percents. Um, and the reason they do that is because they want you, when they made that beer, that is the percent that they used. Now, if once we get down the road a little bit more, I picked up a pound of 2018 um, Cascade hops. Now, Cascade, let's just say, is between 
percent and eight percent alpha acid but after a year it's actually dropped to four so if you were to pick up that package uh, of a year old hop and then try and do a recipe that said you know eight percent alpha acid uh, 0.25 ounces here, 0.5 here, you're actually going to be under. You can't just go by what the, the um, ounces are in the hop. If you don't try and match that alpha acid, it's not going to be the same beer. And obviously, if we were using an older hop and a newer hop in this batch, I think we could tell. Now, we might, I might do another experiment once we get some of these other ones out with, um, send, I got a 2018 Centennial and a 2018 Cascade, and both of them are lower. The, the Cascade is four point something the centennial is six point something where centennial is usually up around 10 so that's actually like four points difference then the the centen or the cascade is six to eight and this is four point something so i think i'll take and do a smash beer with this hop uh, 2018 version versus the 2019 just to show. Uh, so if you're new to home brewing or into home brewing and you might wonder why your beer doesn't taste like they say it should, you might want to check those alpha acids and see. It could also be the other way. Your alpha acid could be a lot higher than what they're calling for in the recipe. So if that's the case, then it could be too bitter, it could be vegetal, uh, too much hot burn, who knows. Uh, I think I went more off on alpha acids than anything else, but I think this just shows the difference using uh, maybe uh, not enough grain versus using the right amount of grain or too much grain. Um, I think for these smash beers, at least for a high alpha acid beer, uh, two and a half pounds of grain is probably where we want. We do have some higher alpha acid hops um, smash beers coming up, so we'll be able to see. But I just want to do this because I noticed it when I was drinking it. Yeah, this tastes good. This could be fine, but this one still has a better mouthfeel. It, it, I, I, it's more balanced for the alpha acid of the hop. Um, where this one, it's good, but I, I think it needs some more, the, the body needs to be a little bit more for almost a, uh, let's just say 10% alpha acid hop. So hopefully you like this. Let me know if you want to know anything else about home brewing and maybe I can do another side by side. We do have a lot more uh, side by sides coming up. Uh, we just, or I just finished bottling um, uh, Cascade. We did Cascade with Pilsner malt, with two row, and with Vienna. So we will have side by sides on that. All made exactly the same. We've already done, or I've already done a um, uh, the Pilsner and two row, and we know about the color, but the Vienna is done, and I will be uh, doing that triple review, let's say, here soon. So uh, if you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, thumbs down. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell so you know when new videos are coming out. And until next time, happy brewing.